Welcome to the third part of this mini-series on ClamAV. In this video, we're going to go over the text signatures that ClamAV supports, as well as how to create your own text signatures and how to load them into your ClamAV instance. In the previous video, I showed how ClamAV can be used to detect specific files based on a hash of their contents, either as a full file or, as with PE executables, based on a particular section of the binary. In this video, we're going to look at how to make signatures using specific strings from malware, using normalized as well as non-normalized strings, and how to combine multiple strings with wildcards. The first concept to understand is normalization. Normalization is the process used by ClamAV to create normal files. That is to say, files where as much variability as possible is removed. For HTML and ASCII files, ClamAV has special processing functionality to remove extra white space, convert all characters to lowercase ASCII, uh, converted character references such as ampersand, pound, 102, and remove control characters. For files that are considered HTML, ClamAV generates three normalized files. Let's take this test file for example. If we run ClamScan on it and we leave the temporary files and tell it to place the temporary files in this directory, then we can go into the temporary directory and take a look at these two files. This first file, nocomment.html, has the comments removed, in addition to extra white space, control characters, etc., uh, everything converted to lowercase. This is what we get. All of the carriage returns from the previous file are now converted to either white space or eliminated completely, and all of the uppercase letters are converted to lowercase. If we take a look at the no tags file, we see that this is purely the text outside of the HTML tags. And if there had been JavaScript found in this file, then a third file would have been created with the script contents normalized and the variable names of those scripts converted to very basic names like n001, n002. For regular ASCII files, text files that are not identified by ClamAV as being HTML, the contents are converted to lowercase, white space is reduced, and control characters are removed. This text file, for example, if we scan it with ClamAV, the resulting file is a single normalized file that is named ClamAV followed by the hash of the file and a .tmp extension. If we take a look at this, again, all of the white space has been reduced to a single space, all the uppercase characters have been converted to lowercase, and any control characters would have been removed. One important thing to note is that ASCII normalization and HTML normalization treat whitespace slightly differently. ASCII normalization will leave whitespace around assignment or comparison operators, such as greater than or less than, equal signs, pluses, minuses, while HTML normalization will remove it. This will make a difference in, sig in the signature creation process. For files identified as PE files, ClamAV will unpack the files and, if possible, normalize the unpacked files. We can see that by taking a look at this PE file that contains an auto IT script. If we go into the directories created, we see that there is an auto IT TMP as well as the ClamAV TMP. If we go into the auto IT directory, there's an auto IT.1, and this is quite literally the auto IT script in its original form. If we go into the ClamAV directory, however, what we have here is the ClamAV temp file, and that is the normalized auto IT script. So the question becomes, which file do we use? On the one hand, normalization will allow you to ignore things like differences in white space and case sensitivity, but it has the double-edged sword of having different normalization techniques depending on how the file is detected. This is an important question because the exact same PHP content for example, is normalized as ASCII if there are no HTML tags, or as HTML if an opening HTML tag is detected in the file. Additionally, if the file starts with GIF or other image format identifiers, 
ClamAV will see it as an image file, and it will not normalize the file at all. In general, if you have a sample of the malware you want to detect, using the normalization that ClamAV does is the best option. You can see this when you run ClamScan with the dash dash debug option. If we run ClamScan with the debug option on this PHP script, we can see all of this debug output, and here we see that it was recognized as ASCII text, which means that ClamAV will use the ASCII normalization. If we take a look at what that file looks like, it's a simple PHP eval where it echoes out a string at the end. If we look at a similar PHP script, but one that echoes out HTML content and run that one through ClamScan, what we see is that it recognized ASCII text and matched the signature for file type HTML. In this situation, ClamAV then uses its HTML normalization process to normalize the file. Any non-ASCII recognition will not end up getting normalized. This causes an issue, however. If you make an ASCII normalized signature, you run the risk of missing detections if the file is embedded in an HTML or image file. If you make an HTML normalized signature, you run the risk of missing detections if the file isn't detected as HTML, either if it's detected as an image or if it's detected as plain ASCII instead of HTML. If you make a non-normalized signature, you run the risk of missing detections with simple whitespace or character case changes. That being said, it's better to make the signature off of the normalized content for the style that ClamAV detects the file as. While it is possible for samples to show up and be detected differently, it's rare, and in those cases, it might be better to differentiate between the signatures as it may lead to other indicators that differ between the styles. For example, one threat actor might use a piece of malware embedded in a GIF, and another that puts it within an HTML file, versus a third that has it bare. So that now that we have our source file, we need to figure out how to turn it into one or more signatures. The first thing we need to do is figure out which files we are aiming the signatures at. ClamAV is capable of identifying 11 distinct types of files, as seen here, and a 12th global style, any file, and an unused file type. So, for instance, you can detect the PHP opening tag inside graphics files, but ignore it in other file types. Let's take a look at how that would work. Here we have a test file that has the GIF header and PHP opening tag. If we run this through ClamScan, we can see that it recognizes it as a GIF file. So, if we take the opening PHP tag and type it into SIGTOOL with the hex dump option, what we get back is the hex encoded string. And then we can use this to create a very primitive image signature. Say, mytest.gif php.0, and the first argument here is going to be 5, so that it only impacts image files, and we're looking for it anywhere, and now we paste our hex signature in there. And now, if we scan this test file and our signature in place, we see that it is detected as mytest.gif.php.0. If, for instance, we wanted to detect this at position 100, we could very easily change this wildcard star to 100, in which case it would have to match the PHP opening tag at the 100th byte in the file. This can be useful, for example, if you are trying to detect something that has to start at the beginning of a file, in which case you could use a zero here instead of the star. So if we wanted to detect the PHP opening tag at position 100, the signature would look like this. If we wanted it at position 0, for example, it would look like this, but that wouldn't detect properly in image files because the image header is starts at position 0. And if we wanted it anywhere between position 0 and position 100, we could use this as an offset and a shift. So the offset would be 0, and then anywhere within the first 100 bytes detecting the PHP open tag. If there is a an indicator from the end of the file, what you can do is you can also do EOF minus and a distance. So for instance, here we're looking for the PHP opening tag within 100 characters of the end of the file. For binaries that contain distinct sections like PE 
you can specify offsets from the start of sections using the S number and then the offset. For example, if we want to look for this PHP tag in section 0 within the first 100 bytes, then you would use S0 plus 100 to look for that. Alternately, if you wanted to look for it in section 1 instead of section 0, you could use S1. Additionally, there is a shorthand for looking in the last section, which is just SL. You can also use the entry point into the binary using EP, and then you can use either plus or minus in here. So you can do plus 100 to say at position 100 after the entry point, or you could say minus 100, in which case you're looking 100 bytes before the entry point. Additionally, you can use the offset and shift syntax that we used above to specify a shift here, for example, which says the entry point plus 100 for the offset, and then within 100 bytes of that. So this would be between byte 101 and 200 to look for the PHP open tag. As we can see, the basic signature structure is signature name, followed by the file type. Zero would be for any file type, or if you are targeting it at graphics, for instance, we can use five or any of the other target types listed here, followed by an offset, whether it's the wildcard, an absolute offset, an offset range, or a section number, or the entry point, followed by some hex string that defines the signature you're looking for. Now that we know how to build a basic single string signature, let's take a look at writing a signature for this sample. The first step is to run clamscan on the sample and have it leave the temp files in your tempter. Here we see that test4 is detected as my test any PHP, and if we use sig tool to find that signature, we see it here, and if we decode the signature, we see that all it is is looking for anything that has a PHP tag. But if we go into the temp directories and we take a look at this, say we want to make sure that this is actually a malicious file. A PHP tag on its own isn't going to do that. So what we need to do is we need to detect additional content. In this case, the evaling of base64 decoded content out of a cookie. To do that, we have one of two choices. We can either take this whole string as it stands and turn it into a signature, or we can build on the fact that we've already detected it as PHP and add some sort of wildcard between the PHP tag and the eval. If we were to do the second, what we would need to do is echo into SigTool and then take this and take our original signature. We could say anywhere in the file, or if we know that it's going to be relatively close to the open PHP tag, we could say 0 to 100 characters between the opening PHP tag and the rest of the signature that we're interested in. Then we can increment this. And now, in order to see if this is matching, we need to use the dash Z option, so that way ClamScan will print out all of the signature matches for the file, rather than just the one that hits first. The proper signature syntax is using a hyphen, not a comma. That's my bad. And here we see that test4 now matches both the original signature as well as our new signature that has the complete eval statement in it. Now that we understand how to build basic signatures, the next video will walk through the process of turning basic signatures into powerful logical signatures using and, or, as well as grouping those operations together. If you found this helpful, hit the like button. If you want to see more like this, hit subscribe. And as always, please leave comments, questions, or suggestions in the comment box below. Have a great day.